this is a show that um, that's kind of close to my heart. I'm a coffee coffee maniac. I love coffee, and um, one of the guys that that got me into when, when when I when I got into coffee as a hobby, uh, one of the first guys I met was Sean Apias. And Sean, welcome to the studio. Come in, come in, young man. I see you've got we've got a whole lot of stuff going down here as well. Um, Sean, awesome. fantastic to have you in the studio. How did you get into coffee? Sure. So, 2006, I started in the industry, um, yeah. working with uh, Sumatran. Sumatran. So, yeah, yes, indeed. It was, Sum- it was Sumatran Pride, I believe, yeah, before Sumatran then. Sumatran Pride Coffee, originally yeah. owned by, well, a couple owners, but the yeah. owner I started with was Cheryl Morton. Okay. okay. And But very much into the beginning of that, within the first year, Deirdre and her family yes. came into the business. Okay. And so, yeah, I was working with Deirdre for a long time and the team there. And had you got well, into it before? I mean, had you, had you no, enjoyed not coffee? Really. Did so, you coffee drink at night? No, not really. So the funny part was, I just, um, you know, Donovan uh, McLagan yes, was actually of course, working Donovan for the... Samarch and Pride before me. Okay, Urban and, Express, and, that's Urban Express. And what's interesting is, I was just visiting the guys, actually trying to sell them products in the okay. packaging industry. Packaging industry. Yeah, okay, and, okay. and the funny part is that that's kind of how it started, where okay. I just started hanging out with the guys on Fridays, tasting coffees. Yeah. It was so fantastic. It was something that I, I realized, wow, it's it's it can be so much more than just a job. It can yeah. actually end up being something that gives you something to wake up in the morning for other than the fact that caffeine, caffeine will help you through the yes, day. Yes. But something I really enjoyed, like when I started tasting and really experiencing it. So yeah. I grew up in the culture of, you know, uh, Frisco and yes, you know, yeah, you yeah, it, yeah. and you hoi them and, and, and you know, I grew yeah. up with that and something I didn't really enjoy, but um, I've pretty much my whole life been more of a tea drinker. Yeah, I still enjoy my tea, yeah, freshly yeah. infused teas, oh, right. um, because it's all flavor to me, yeah. and flavor and balance and the experience that you have when you drink it and what you enjoy yeah. about it. And if you're going to drink something, you must enjoy it, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. the beauty about coffee is, coffee is so much more than a beverage. It comes yeah. with a story. It comes with people that are behind the scenes that we never see. Yes. And the beauty about that is I've got to experience that around South Africa. I've got to experience that in Africa. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just been a phenomenal, phenomenal journey. That, that's that's so true because mm-hmm. I mean, we, we'll, we'll start with all that, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the production and the whole thing just now because yeah. it's, a, it's a story. It's, more, it's like wine. It's so much like yeah. wine in, yeah. in terms of that, the growing, the, the brewing, the, 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 the roasting, you know. So, um, I mean, did, did Donovan, uh, Donovan is, a, is uh, I know, we, we try, I tried to get him to do a thing, he was, he was, he was shy, so he didn't yeah. want to go, but Donovan is amazing, I'm sure he yeah. probably drove a lot of your passion in the beginning. I want to tell you something, Donovan was always there to kick me in the ass, no matter <laughs> what I did, um, you know, I'll never forget, we went to the Coffee Champs in 2012 in, in, in Cape Town, and yes. I was an absolute nervous wreck, it was the first national competition I was competing in with Latte Art. Yeah. And Donovan and Ange were there the whole step of the way, encouraging me, telling me, you're going to do well. I did disastrously. (laughs) Um, But at the end, they told me I stuffed up. But we move on. We grow from that. And I realized that I'm not a great competitor, but I love coaching. I love training. I love mentoring. And so okay. that for me is, does it mean I'll ever compete again? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've kind of said to a couple of guys that my aim would be probably at the age of 50. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> okay, you little, want to do it. It's a little yeah, bit away. No, but, I mean, just, just no. to say that, that when he's talking about competing, there are these, these amazing competitions. And uh, Angelina and, and Donovan from Urban, uh, Urban yeah. Express. Uh, Angeline worked work for Syro as well for, yeah. for a while. She, for a while. she did a, She trained myself and, and, and my son Chelsea as well, which was, which was mm. such great fun. We did a three-day course. Um, but I mean, these competitions are, are quite uh, they, intense. They, yeah. they're intense. Yeah. Uh, the baristas that are out there, they go for these competitions mm. and, they, and they've got to produce a, um, a certain amount of coffees. Mm. Or what, what, how does it work? It's, it's three... Uh, yeah, there's three different competitions. So the main barista competition is a competition where you are serving 12 different drinks Yes. to seven judges you have 15 minutes yeah. and it's a very intense competition because it's not only about what you present in in terms yeah. of the brand of coffee or the the country of coffee yeah. but you are also presenting yourself as a barista so it's very similar to like a barman style of competition yeah. where you are you sharing your passion for coffee but more importantly yes. the journey the coffee's taken to that table yeah then the second competition is the latte art competition um yeah. i've been very involved in the south african latte art community for a yes. long time i've had judged i've, I've competed yes. i've done a variety of things 
the latte art competition gives you the ability to be able to express your artistic passion for coffee. Yeah. yeah. Where you're gonna, you'll see just now. Obviously, if we get those little inserts of we yes. played around earlier doing a teddy bear and an elephant. Yes. Yes. And then the cup tasters competition. So the cup tasters comp. What's interesting yeah. with that is, it's a competition where your palate is okay. basically being uh, tested. Yeah, tested. Okay. So. For the last two years, myself and Chris Burke have yeah. actually run the Cup Tasters competition okay. around South Africa, yeah. where we actually involved in the roasting process, we're involved in the blending process, we're involved in setting up the cups, and yeah. it's three cups in front of you, eight sets, and one of the cups out of the set of three is the odd one out. Okay. And you have to isolate the odd one out. Gee, it's okay. So it's a test of your palate, basically. Yeah. So see how it's, it works. It's, a, it's an amazing comp. So there's there's so many. Uh, I see this talking about flavors there. Yeah. Viv, Viv is asking why people like flavored coffees. I don't know. Give me a coffee flavor. Mm. Coffee flavored coffee any day. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, Sumatran, we, yeah. we started, um, when I started there, they had flavoured coffees from, yeah. from the get-go. And, yeah. you know, your Amarula cream yes. and your variety of flavours. And I think it's really a case of being able to enjoy a great cup of coffee that has an amazing flavour in it yeah. that is not necessary like that alcohol, you know. So yeah. it doesn't have the Amarula, it doesn't have the Kahlua, yeah. but it's got that flavour in it. And yeah. the interesting process is that flavor is basically absorbed into the bean while the yeah. bean is still hot. So oh, wow. once the beans are dropped out of the, the drum okay. and they, they will toss the beans in the syrup. Yeah. Oh, I see. And it, I mean, coffee is incredibly porous. If yes. you, I don't know if you've ever left coffee in the fridge and you've left onions open. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, no, it's a disaster. And it, it really yeah, impacts yeah. the quality and the flavor of the coffee. So the, the beauty about something like Irish cream, vanilla, yeah. Kahlua fudge, yes. you know. It, is it, it a is beginner's it coffee? Yeah, I mean, so people that haven't haven't really got into the coffee is but bitter for them, and they're starting it for the first time. Maybe a, a, a yeah. vanilla coffee is, yeah. is maybe it takes that edge off. Let's just yeah. say that you know the, the 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 culture out there. I think in the industry right now is milk and two sugars. Yeah, that's kind of like the the, the benchmark or the base that a coffee shop sets their costings at. You yes, say that. Yes. With something like hazelnut or vanilla or Kahlua. It, it's really a case of having a coffee and, and just adding to the experience. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with a flavored coffee. I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with people adding sugar to coffee or milk to coffee. Yeah. You must enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Um, yes, quality coffee, fresh coffee, yeah. buying from a local roaster, yeah. um, supporting local people, the local community, a great thing. And, and especially important. when the coffee has some sort of traceability, like yeah. you know it, it comes out of Africa, it's coming from this specific yeah. farm, or it comes out of Brazil and it's coming yeah. from this region. It's, you know, yeah. it's so much more, it adds to your experience as a coffee drinker. It's not just about the cup anymore, yeah. it's about the whole, the holistic experience yes. of drinking coffee, yeah. Well, uh, let me, let me, let's, let's go on to a little, uh, little clip here. I've got a, I've got a clip of, um, of Sumatran, I thought maybe yeah. we start awesome. with the Sumatran guys. And, and uh, Deidre and, and Claire, I, I absolutely <laughs> love them, they, they, sh they showed, Deidre got it right with me with the milk. She showed me how to get that milk right for the latte mm. art. Mm. Let's, let's have a quick look at what we put together here. <laughs> Some people that I've known since I got involved in, in interested in coffee are it's a family run business. Uh, it is Claire and Deirdre and, and of course Jay who works on the machines at Sumatran, Sumatran Coffee. So we're going to go and have a quick word with Deirdre. Let's see what she's got to say. So we're at Sumatran. Sumatran Pride. It used to be another Sumatran now with Deirdre. Yes. yes. <laughs> So basically what they do is they send us a list of their current offerings yeah. and then we decide right we're looking for a Tanzanian to do this kind of blending with okay. um, and then we'll order a whatever it depends yeah. so yeah. we'll decide right we're going to look, go with the Tanzania and we want a really good quality so we'll go with the double A bean which is just the grading okay. of the bean. So you're grading the, screen, the beans as well. There's grading of the bean, there's screen wow. size and it all adds to um, the type of coffee you end up yeah. with. Right. Yeah, okay. um, and then so then what we do is we order in our 60 yeah. to 70 kg bags of oh, green big, coffee, big but then we sample roast them. We roast them in 300 gram batches, Yes. Um, and then we do, we do tastings. 
So we'll do tastings on day one, day three, day seven, okay. to see how the coffee changes over that time okay. as it's degassed. Yes. Um, and then also we okay, so run. because after the roasting, you leave it to you, the gas you to leave de -gas. It, You leave yeah. it to degas to get. I don't. I just go. Straight, straight, straight. In. straight. <laughs> just, just try. Do yourself okay. a favor. Take a batch and just yeah. do it after day one, day three, day seven. Okay. And I mean, there's one particular coffee that we found was pre. It, it was at the top of its game yeah. after the thirteenth day. Wow. And I mean, that's to us. Really anything in our store is never older than than, than yeah. ten days to fourteen days. Yeah. Um, so after we, we, we watch out our cycles and we roast yes. according to need. And, and the, yeah, the, um, the correct quantities. That absolutely, must be, it's, because it's you, cannot, you cannot have coffee standing around yes. for, for two months or yeah. even for a month. It's yeah. just a no-no. Well, it's 15, 15 months, green, 15, uh, 15 days, uh, yes. beans, yes. 15 minutes, minutes. ground. <laughs> absolutely. Ground. Yeah. 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 So, okay. you know, so, and then what we do is, uh, once we've done our sample roasting and we've done our, our tastings, yeah. our cupping, um, we then, to develop a, a blend, we'll take something with uh, a certain type of acidity, another yeah. one with a body, another one with an aftertaste. Yeah. Um, blend, start with two, add a third one until we're happy yeah. with the, the, the cup taste, taste okay. for a filter air extraction or a, a, or yeah. a plunge extraction. Yeah. And often what you develop for filter extraction works doesn't work very well with an, if you use yes. it through an espresso machine. Of course, yes. Because the extraction processes are so different. It's coarser or it's, finer. It, it is. So coarser with the plunger, yes. finer with the, with the espresso, espresso machine. machine yeah. because it and can so it has a lot to do with the, the amount of time that your water comes into contact with your coffee. Okay. So that also has a lot of uh, yeah. a, a impact on the type of bean you're going to use to get a, a good cup taste. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, she was touching on some very interesting stuff there, and um, yeah. particularly with, with the palate and, and, and having your um, mixing your coffees yeah. for, for, your, for certain brewing methods. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there are, there's a lot of coffee, uh, it can be brewed in various ways, and, yeah. and you're saying that, that those beans are specifically ground and made or, or, or even uh, yeah. roasted for that. Yeah, you look a lot, you know, Deirdre made a very, very important statement and that is choosing the right coffee for the right application yeah. based upon flavor, flavor, taste, balance. I mean, yeah. she spoke about acidity, yeah. sweetness, sourness, bitterness. A lot of the time we just choose something off the shelf that we yeah. actually haven't put some thought to. Yeah. And we haven't actually, we just buy it for the sake of buying it because it has a name like Mocha Java. Yes, or it has oh, a name like Mocha Java is the one. <laughs> the, uh, the thing is, all those coffees come with a story. They, yeah. Mocha Java uh, is a very, very popular blend that actually was formulated. It's Mocha, the port of Mocha, Ethiopia, yeah. Java, Java Colossi, Indonesia. It's a blend. Okay. It should be a blend in Ethiopia and Indonesia. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't so even know that. Yeah, so it's interesting. Like, I mean, a lot of people say they will use like Yemen because yeah. uh, that's obviously where it's coming on, on, on the top of Africa. Yeah. But it's it's just a popular blend. Vienna Michon, another popular blend that's okay. just developed through the ages. Um, Blue Mountain. Yes. Interesting, Blue Mountain, they formulated a blend and they make, but Blue Mountain's actually originally from the Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee. Okay. Okay. Which is a coffee that is grown on a very, very high level, and it's one of the right. top five most expensive coffees in the world. Wow. Okay, really. So, so the Blue yeah. Mountain should be good. It's, well, look, <laughs> if it's a Blue Mountain blend, yes, you yes. obviously don't know don't what know. Okay. different origins are coming into the coffee. But everybody brings their own touch, their yeah. own feel, their own blend, the variety that comes together. Whether they stick to the authenticity of it, yeah. a lot of people do. I know with a lot of the brands, when they blend a mocha java, yeah. they try use an Ethiopian and, uh, Indonesia or Yemen okay. in Indonesia. It depends if you can get your hands on it because yeah. Yemenese coffee is very difficult to get your hands okay. on. Okay. Very, very, very difficult because yeah. it's it's a very popular coffee because Yemen and Ethiopia are the birthplace yes. of, of coffee. Ethiopia is well, maybe, maybe let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely Ethiopia, the birthplace of coffee bean, yeah. um, and uh, I mean. Uh, it does it grow at a certain, I mean, it seems to be a high, high altitude, is that, yeah. is that the one to get? So the whole thing is, if you look across the map, and if yeah. you lay the, the map out, they call it the coffee belt. Yeah. So it's either side of the equator, specific okay. distance, and that is optimal when it comes to growing coffee, because right. you're looking at the perfect climate. Okay. So yes, altitude plays a massive role in that, but the climate itself. Okay. So when I, in 2018, when we launched the Barista Academy um, in Uganda, we launched it on the Nile in Jinja. Wow. If you yeah. look on the map, it's yeah. on the equator. Okay. I 
let's just say sweated in places yes. we should not talk about. <laughs> it's a bit hot, eh? It was just a, a tad hot. So, <laughs> so sleeping at night, yeah, like and sleeping humidity. at night with, with the aircon on like 16, Jeez, and yeah. I'm still sweaty. Yeah. You know, exactly. taking additional shirts to train, <laughs> walk, it, it's just incredibly, incredibly hot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. coffee thrives in that climate. So okay. you must remember, coffee is a fruit, which a lot yeah. of people don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a fishy it's, thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's grown in a cherry. And the thing is, it needs that climate for that, that the yeah. coffee to, to basically get the right acids and all the stuff, the climate okay. that it's basically grown yeah. in. So, I would say the soil, the, the yeah. soil, just like wine, the soil, soil the plays thing. a massive role. Yeah. There's so many aspects that play a massive role in the cultivation of coffee. Yeah. But climate for me and altitude would probably be okay. one of the, yeah. great, the greatest. You know, I had the, I didn't have the privilege to go to, um, so you probably heard of Uganda, Mount Elgon. It's yeah. a very, very sippy falls. Very okay. well known region. They they, okay. they process organic coffee. Wow. I didn't have the privilege to go there. I was very, very close. Yeah, but yeah. It being grown at like one and a half thousand meters above sea level Yo. on the slopes by waterfalls, it's it's yeah. absolutely incredible. Mm. I got to hang out with one of, the, one of the guys by the name of Samuel that goes there on a weekly basis to purchase sure. coffee. Okay, okay. And and then actually sits and with the guys in this warehouse yeah. while they were sorting coffee from Mount Elgon. Do they dry it on the farm? Because they have to dry. Okay, so yeah. so they get the, yeah. the, the cherry beans. Yeah. They lay them out. Mm. To dry. Yeah. I mean, in, in huge, I've, I've seen sort of massive yeah. uh, flat areas. Yeah, yeah, there's generally two different methods, two of the popular methods of processing coffee, and that's yeah. washed yeah. and dry method. Okay. Washed is where they take the cherries straight off the, ch the trees, yeah. wash it, strip it, and then dry it oh, wow. in the bean form. Okay. Natural is where they dry it in the cherry. In the cherry. So you get additional fermentation. Yes. Then strip it. Okay. And then take oh, it through the process. So, so okay. it's it's very interesting. It all depends. So when you choose a coffee, like when you roast coffee, yeah. what you must do is occasionally buy a variety of different coffees that are look closer and say, I want something that's not necessarily washed. I want something that is maybe a naturally processed coffee. Yeah. Where there's a lot of additional fermentation. And then we go one step further where we call honey processed coffee. So a lot of people think, oh, you've used honey. But it's actually the clumps of beans that are stuck together because they've partially depulped it. Sure, okay. So there's still a little bit of flesh on the beans. Yes, okay. It clumps together and looks like clumps of honeycomb. Yeah. Is it bean sweet or sour? I haven't tasted a Look, coffee bean. If you take a coffee bean um, on its own in the green form, yeah, you're yeah. going to crack a tooth. Let's uh, just yeah, be honest. Yeah, okay. It's so rock, it's, rock, it's rock, rock hard. hard yeah. It's when you roast it and it expands uh, and it, it becomes brittle. I actually did that by mistake. I put some uh, mm. some green beans in my mm. in my uh, grinder, and it yeah. <laughs> that, that was a great nice. idea. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you want uh, honesty when it comes to coffee, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, okay, so so the, the, uh, then the green bean is it's it's not dry. It's not dry completely. It's it has still got some. It still has a moisture content in it. So. When a coffee comes fresh from a farm, you're probably looking at approximately 10 to 12 percent moisture content that's okay. still within that bean. They need to, when they strip it, a lot of the time when they've stripped it, they check the moisture content as it drops. And then before they bag it, they will get it to a certain point. Because the problem is, if it's beyond, let's say, 12 or 13 percent, yeah. you're going to potentially end up with mold. Oh, okay, and okay. You're okay, going to end sure. up getting okay. like, like in the rocks. bags. Yeah, in yeah, the bags. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And the worst thing you can do is that because basically you can take an entire 60 kg bag of coffee and throw it away. Yeah, yeah. jeez. And yeah. how long does a bag of coffee like that actually last sitting, sitting oh. like that? Look, when you buy from one of the merchants or you go to the lo yeah. local guys, some of the bags generally will have a date on it. Okay. Most of the coffees you want to be buying is in the region of say a year, two years, sometimes okay. even three years. Wow. So currently so the crops that are out there, yeah, yeah, five years, up to five years. Wow. I mean, I've roasted a coffee that was five years old. Okay. The thing is, is that it starts to get what we call the, ro the roaster's defect as they call bagginess. Yeah. So you actually end up getting like, a, must, like a musty taste okay, right. that comes through the bean when right. you roast it. If it's you a 10 year old bag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Fair enough. The one thing is, is that like, like Deirdre mentioned, the whole 15, 15, 15, yes. it's so important that you follow that, that chain. 
Yeah. It's like, you know, with, with fresh produce, you never want to break the cold chain. Yeah. It's the same thing with coffee. There's, there's a specific chain that you, you want to keep to, to yes. ensure that you always quality. are optimizing quality. Quality. Exactly. Quality. Exactly. And I, you know, and I always say to, to, to the guys, uh, mm. you, 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 when you're making coffee in your coffee shop, um, yeah. you are the last, you're the last uh, uh, link mm. in that chain. Yeah. Mm. And those farmers have taken such care in growing that stuff. Yeah. And they've dried it. And they've taken it and they've washed it. And they've taken, they've got the beans and they send the beans off. And then the roaster gets, gets hold of it. And then the roasting is another whole story. Uh, you know, to, to get that, it's a, it's a science. Yeah. And, and um, to get that roast perfect and everybody gets yeah. that. And then the blend. Yeah. Then the blend comes yeah. and they blend those roasts together. And they get this perfect bean. And then the guy in the coffee shop buggers it up. <laughs> you can take the best coffee in the world and destroy it and you can take the worst coffee in the world and actually make it pretty decent yeah it's you know they, when when you buy a coffee a lot of the guys don't realize so if you go to the shop so the number one coffee in the world so yeah. ryan mcgoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogoogo
Yeah, yeah. It's that. Yeah, okay. So okay, it's the same okay. thing with coffee. It's 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 reacting like that. I see a question here. Yes, uh, David Bjerkus says, uh, is the world running out of coffee or is it a myth? David, go away. It's a myth. <laughs> it's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> David like, is a David's a very good friend of mine. He, he uh, owns okay. a coffee roastery in Pretoria <laughs> called Red Truck. Um, red truck. Yeah, oh, red nice. truck coffee. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice. indeed, nice. David. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I'm hanging out with Devet on Saturday night over oh. a nice big piece of steak. Oh, nice. Um, nice. So, so yeah, machine. look, um, you know, I think the world's coffee production is, yeah. is, is gets harmed like with anything when it comes to yeah. climate change and yes. a whole lot of stuff. And obviously, yeah. climate change is going to impact so many different countries. So yeah. one of the one of the big things we found pre-COVID in Africa is because of bad weather, for example, in Africa where there's lots of rain, yes. what happens is you get flooding. Okay, what happens right. is you get crop damage. Yeah. So for example, with, with one of the washing stations I work with, Mr. Emmanuel from Baho Coffee, yeah. he lost over 25% of his production because of flooding. Jeez. Now we're talking about 25% of people's income, yeah. their livelihood, their farms that they, they can't supply the cherries to the washing station yes. so that coffee can get processed so that those people can get paid. Yeah, yeah. Because the interesting thing with coffee, every farm doesn't have their own washing station to process the okay, coffee. Okay. Farmers you normally know, sell. Off. Yes. Okay, so okay. the, we're dealing with, for example, like if you want to call it the co-op or the broker or the washing station. Yes. So when we get coffee like directly from Rwanda, for example, from Baho, we're getting it directly from those different washing stations. Yes, yes. So you know exactly where that coffee's come from. Okay. The problem in the world right now is wow. these things that happen, natural disasters. Yeah. Um, so pre, pre-COVID, pre to give you an example, Rwanda came out of their, their harvesting season. Mm-hmm. They were supposed to export coffee going yeah. into April, May. Yes. And guess what? All the borders are shut. Oh, of course, because of course with COVID, that's that's the main that's so the main issue is that the borders are bags, closed. bags, bags, warehouses oh, of coffee man. sat. Farmers didn't sitting, get paid. Sitting, sitting and there, waiting for the waiting so, for the. So yeah, that brings up a good question. I mean, yeah. it, it, coffee coffee can get impacted on so many levels, and and yes, is there an insatiable thirst for the stuff? I mean, do those yeah. farmers they just produce yeah. and it's gone? I mean, I Look, don't know. Their, their care and time and attention that they put into their crops. Yes. It's if they treat their trees well and they look after their crops and they ensure that they don't end up getting insect damage. And, yes. You know, they try to treat their, their, their crop like you would any tree. You know, like yeah. you, 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 you're cutting this beautiful bonsai tree that yeah. you end up with this magical picture. Yes. It's the same thing for them. They, the, the maximum amount of yield they get out of one tree okay. puts more money in their back pocket. So it's, it's, it's such an important step that we don't realize. We don't realize that, that hardship yeah. And, yeah. And, and that energy. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, this whole uh, uh, trade thing, what, what do they call it? Uh, with, with, where they've got to look after the workers, they've got to look after the... Yeah, fair trade. Fair trade, yeah. fair yeah. trade so stuff. There, I mean, there are different organizations around the world that have basically helped to empower the farmers to help yeah. them get better prices for their... Yeah. You must understand that a farmer doesn't sell to a washing station what the beans going to weigh. Yeah. They sell okay. the entire cherry. Yes. So they get paid per pound okay. generally because most coffee is traded in dollar. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's, it's that system. So they're paid per the pound. And if their, their quality is good, the size of the bean is good, the cherry itself was yes. treated correctly, it was picked at the right time. Yeah. There's so much stuff to take into consideration. If you, take, if you pick from the farm, and you pick overripe, underripe a variety yeah. of coffee. So yeah, you've got to have the right. If you don't pick it correctly, okay. you, you're gonna you're gonna end up getting, I would say, a, a, not a good buy on that no, sell yeah. on that coffee. You're gonna yeah. lose money okay. per pound. So yeah. so they, they, the the pound literally the, the the weight of that bean also indicates the quality. Definitely, without a doubt, in terms of density. Okay. Wow. Um, but. Remember as well, it will be also based upon that specific country. Okay. So if they know, for example, like a very, very hard grown bean, so for example, at 2,400 meters above sea level in Nicaragua, yeah. the density of the bean adds a little bit to okay. the weight of the bean. So that will be taken into account, yes. but it is a harder bean. Yeah. So that's okay. why you see on some of the bags it says SHB or yes. SHG. Okay. That's code word for strictly hard 
strictly hard grown, strictly okay. hard bean. Okay. There's all these code words, and then you get sure. your different gradings. And gradings are ge generally related yeah. upon how many defects are in that coffee. In other words, yeah. is there insect damage? Are there are the beans whole? You know, okay. there's so much that can actually. Go how do you wrong. how do you find out what you're buying? I mean, how do you find out what's the best? You uh, don't. Rating? You buy that bag. You get home. You squeeze it like everybody else. <laughs> you go, wow, this smells amazing. <laughs> I'm talking about COVID. Neither one has a cup of coffee in their hands. I know it's true. It's it's true. We we have had a cup just before. Yeah, we did actually. Yeah. And we have got some brewing going to go. We're going to happen right around about now, Funk Soul Brother, because uh, <laughs> because I mean obviously the, the the next the next thing is is uh, once you've got the the roasting right, like yeah. you said with those yeah. profiles. And, and roasting it properly, mm. then it comes to the brewing process, and and yeah. and the brewing process is just a. Yeah. There's so many kinds Endless. of Endless. processes, Endless. Endless. and yeah. and different grind than the, the the grinding, you know. Yeah. Um, you know the thing is, is that I brought three different brew methods. Yes. Number one, the plunger. The plunger. Everybody's got one um, of these. Yes. People have got stuff lying in the back of the cupboard that is a plunger, and think it's something from the Russian Revolution because they don't know what it is. Yes. Generally, most people that pull it out of that cupboard are people that it's probably broken, they haven't yeah. got a clue what it is, they don't know how to use it. Um, the number one brew method currently yes. in the world, yes. the Aeropress. Aeropress. It's, been, it's, been, it's been a very, very uh, popular method of brew. It basically gives you the best of both worlds, the pour over as well yeah. as the extraction. So I'm not going to demonstrate yeah. this one. I think the portability as well. Yeah. It's, kind of quite, it's quite, it's yeah, quite nice and portable it's, if you want to. If it's, you want to. it's great. It's absolutely great. You put your coffee in here. You yeah. put your little filter paper there. You fill it up. You give it a stir. There's so Dude, many different right methods. Yeah. You you clip that on and you put it around on, on the cup through. and you and, yeah. and it pushes straight into so your So it gives your you that combination cup. of like the. The effects you get of like a filter coffee in terms uh -huh. of flavor because of the grind size okay. that impacts the extraction. A but thicker grind size or thinner, or slightly or thicker than espresso. Th so thicker, I would okay. say coarser. Yeah. What I do is I normally say you've got along the lines of espresso, which is very much like a fine sea sand. Okay. Then you get something along the lines of uh, like a white sugar, yeah. and then you go to a brown or a treacle type sugar. Wow, that would okay. be your coarser type grind coarser size. Browns. You would use something along the lines of a, like a white sugar. Okay. In terms so, of this, so in terms of ground size, a so lighter but but still a slightly bit, coarser. A little bit finer than filter ground coffee. Okay, so yeah. if you if you feel filter ground coffee in the in the yeah. shop, it's quite chunky. Yes. You know. Okay. So that and that's the thing. That's what I've ground. I pre-ground um, some coffee Lovely. over here. So I've actually pre-ground some Brazil. So okay. I'm taking you to Brazil. Copacabana. Huh? Copa. Copa Cabana. That's right. Oh, lovely, man. We're gonna get to taste taste some here. Yeah? I hope the guys are watching. So backstage, what I've done. As I've pre-boiled some okay. water yes, in my water, kettle. Yes. Uh, water, guys, very, very, very important. Yes, if you got this one, it's very nice. Yeah. Very, very good. You and need. if you're thirsty, it'll <laughs> quench your thirst. Thirsty um, water. <laughs> the reason I obviously go with a good brand of water, and especially using, if you've got, if you've got a filter at home, it's great. Yeah, okay. Use your filter at home. Osmosis stories? Preferably not, because reverse okay. osmosis takes everything out of the water. You okay. don't want dead water. Okay, you want so you want water. like a little bit of something. You want Just a little bit of something. The big filter. thing for me is a combination of, have a look on the bottle generally, what is the TDS, the total dissolved solids? That, yeah. That's the combination of inorganic, which is like your elements and minerals, magnesium, yes. sodium, calcium. Okay. And organic particles, which is like your muck, your sludge, that type oh, of stuff. Oh, nice. Okay, so very nice. if you look at this, for example, it's got 217. That is actually, when it comes to okay. water quality from the World Coffee events, yeah. they recommend anything between about 180 and 250 of wow. total okay. dissolved solids, which means your water has substance. Yeah. Because that brings out a lot that's within the coffee. It highlights the acids, it okay. highlights the sugars, it's all okay, that. Okay. But then your other three important things I've mentioned already, magnesium, calcium, and sodium. Yes. And then a big factor is um, obviously chlorine. Ah, chlorine. Chlorine, okay. when you're taking water out of your tap, is yes. gonna impact the quality of your coffee incredibly. Okay. You're gonna have a major problem. Okay. And then another thing is uh, pH. Okay, oh, the, the acidity. Yes. Acidity. So and, if you've got a very acid, remember, alkaline. coffee is naturally acidic. Okay, okay. If water is very acidic, you're going to have that clash of okay. the, the two acids and you're going to impact the flavor, the profile, the, the complexity right. of your coffee. 
So try go with a water that's a lot more alkaline. Okay. It okay. really is. So, you know, you've got a lot of brands out there of water. The reason is, for me, I'm looking for consistency in terms yeah. of brewing. So I pre-boil my kettle. We're at home, you know, you're not going to have the fancy scale. You're not going to have yeah. all that stuff. So what I've done is I'm going old school here. Yeah, okay, okay. I ignore the gooseneck. All right, so no, okay. no, the gooseneck's very fancy. It, yes, it doesn't nice. matter. It doesn't matter, the gooseneck. Okay. What, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it over here. This yeah. is a 350 mil plunger. Okay. So for those guys at home, if you bar, if you just bar a simple filter ground coffee, yeah. It doesn't need to be anything special. If you okay. go to your local roastery, if you speak to your local roasters that are stopping buying coffee. Spa. Yeah, yeah here you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Buy a filter ground coffee or yeah. ask for a plunger ground coffee. So yeah. the difference between filter and plunger. So feel that, you know? Okay. Feel how rough that is. Yes. This is now yeah. it's like kind beyond, of like beyond like, just thicker than sugar. I'd yes. Say it's, it's it's probably between your like your yeah. your treacle, your yeah. thicker, thicker sugar. Thicker sugar yeah. And the nice thing with a 350 more plunger. Yeah. Let's just take one heaped tablespoon. One heaped tablespoon. And that's it. 350 mils. Okay, so that 350 mils, one heaped tablespoon. Because you never know. Okay. Pile it in, you know, or, or, they, or they put it like a so teaspoon. So the beauty about this fancy scale, I was telling you yesterday, is I have the ability to, to time. Okay. But more importantly, the nice thing with this particular scale yes. is this scale can actually pair to my phone via Bluetooth. <laughs> actually tell me when to not pour, when to pour. I can put in a recipe to get the ultimate uh, brew in terms of extraction. And um, with, the, with the plunger as well, just give it a nice little stir so you yeah. make sure that you wet all that coffee. Yes. And then all you want to do, you'll notice it's 26 seconds. Okay. You want to just pop this on. Oh, so it and times you, it. And then you basically, at two and a half to three minutes, you plunge it down and serve it. Wow, okay. okay. So three. A lot of people have, you know, the plunger is very underrated for me. Yeah. I love the flavor of plunger, but what a lot of people don't enjoy yeah. is that sediment, that taste oh, okay. in your mouth. Yes, yes. Now, this is where the Clever Dripper comes in. Clever Dripper? It's clever. It's very, I'm sure. It's so, very, hello. <laughs> What's your name? Doesn't talk back to me at all. <laughs> so, I'm watching the time over there, and I'm going to I'm gonna just, so I'm gonna just start this yeah, right yeah, now. Do just, it, to, do just, to, just to do it through. You okay, know, well, let's okay, just get this all done. Do it, do it, do it. Because we're using a filter paper, the yeah. one thing a lot of people don't take into consideration is they so don't... going to come out the bottom, is it sealed? No. Sealed there. So, so, do you know, this is where the surprise comes in. Is oh, that right. It's called the Clever Dripper because it's got a valve that releases the water. Ah, oh, look at that. So, once you've actually... Very clever. <laughs> very. very clever. So, I've just pre-rinsed that. Okay. And then what I've done here is I've actually pre-ground oh, a whole yeah. lot of oh, Rwandan of coffee. coffee. Ah. So my favorite coffee is Rwanda. Okay. Um, Ethiopian Rwanda, absolutely fantastic. African coffees. Love I it, like love that. it, love it, love it. And now with so you wet this, you wet this thing first. You, you pre-wet it. And the reason you want to pre-wet it is you want to get rid of any of that sediment or, or okay. obviously um, right. mess that's in the paper. You want to yeah. basically, and then with a Clever Dripper, three tablespoons. Three tablespoons. A little bit the Clever more. Dripper takes 500 mils. Oh, right, okay. And with it being also a full immersion brew, yeah. it gives you a much, much, much nicer finish. Full immersion the brew. And the reason I say that is you'll see, yeah, so I've Tell started me what's that. F full immer you mean full immersion it's, means it's the coffee is com completely, completely covered. covered. Okay, okay. But with a lot of the full immersion, so you'll see now, I'm going to fill this up. Yeah. We're on just on two and a half minutes. Sure, okay. Well, so one, I'm going to start plunging that. So you see, okay. this is called um, coffee juggling. Yes, I see that. Now, I started pouring that at 2 minutes 15. Yeah. So with the, with the Clever Dripper, okay. that you want it to soak or steep for yeah. about 4 minutes. Okay. And then oh, this one, this one. you put it onto the vessel and let it extract through. Okay. So it's the same as this being full immersion, Yeah. but it's full immersion filtered. And filtered all that mm. all that sediment is taken out as well. Okay, oh, so if you like the plunger mm. but you don't want the mm. sediment, then you yeah. use the little clever dripper. Little clever dripper. But Just. everybody, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoy plunger coffee. Yes. So this is yes, one hundred percent Brazil Cerrado. Wow. Okay. So single origin, single origin Brazil. Uh, yeah. uh, single origin meaning it's come from one place, one farm. Well, not necessarily so, yeah, because the you get single origin, you get single estate. Okay. So if it's come from wow. one farm, gone through one washing station, 
then yes. you will get, for example, like Uganda, Mount Algon, CP Falls. Okay. And you know it comes from that region right. and from a specific washing station, yes. which is based, for example, CP Falls. So with this one, this comes specifically from the Cerrado region, okay. but it's not a single estate. Right. It's 100% Brazil Cerrado region. Wow, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So that's yeah. the region. Mm. Very nice. So if you smell it, the one thing that's very popular about Brazil, it's very nutty. Very nutty. Very, <laughs> very like, like Austin, you. Austin yeah. Powers. Yeah. When I came on after your little sing and dance, I didn't know how I was going <laughs> to um, take over from you. <laughs> oh, but give nice. that a little taste. Okay, now how do we taste it properly? Then? What's, what's the proper way of Do you want to do like solid evaluation? Solid like evaluation. Proper. Okay, proper. Eh? I remember proper. you were telling me about this evaluation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour myself a little bit here. Okay. And the thing is as well, what I'm doing is I'm also watching the clock. Yes. Because at, at 5 minutes 15, yes. I'm going to give this a stir, leave it for a minute, and I'm going to pop it onto the vessel for that to extract through. Oh, yeah, I know. So we, we're seriously oh, juggling right. it. Yeah, so this is called a cupping spoon. A cupping spoon. Look at that. That's got a little bit of, you can see the camera there. So, so it gives you the ability spoon. to basically get a nice big portion of coffee and act, act, this looks, this evaluate This looks like the one that you can bend. Watch, watch, yeah. Watch, I can bend it. Wow. Bend it with my mind. Wow. See? Don't bend my cupping spoon. Okay, I'll bend. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Caution, it's right. hot. Okay, it's that's hot. my official waiver. All right, all right. All right. So what you want to do is you're gonna slurp it, like slurp it off a spoon, like like Sweet. hectically or Hectic, like viciously. Vicious, a okay. vicious slurp, people. <laughs> my God, man, <laughs> <laughs> that is hectic. I think I could have done it no, 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 you more than you. You could have done. You, wow, that wasn't that wasn't very vicious. That wasn't vicious. So enough. you see, I've got a cast iron palate, so. For me, <laughs> it is a little bit hot still. <laughs> Do it again. Jeez. Mm. <laughs> now, what's interesting about introducing a lot of air, you pick up... Thanks, Wendy. I'm watching you. <laughs> Just drink it. Just drink it. No, I no. can't do it like you did. You need to but be more vicious. But you see, that comes with time and practice. Okay, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now <laughs> is I'm going to take my little stirrer. I'm going to give this... Right. So. I want you to have a smell there. What we're basically yes. doing here is we're breaking the crust. Now this is the Rwanda. Look at that crema on the top. I know. There. Smell that. Oh, I mean, that is just so beautiful. It's, that, a, it's a very fruity coffee. The, the crema is uh, are the, are the oils mm. that yeah. come off the, yeah. off the beans. So the combination of basically temperature yeah. and extraction time and heat give okay. you that crema. But the thing is, wow. is that it's trapped within yes. this vessel in this vessel. Of With course. an espresso machine, yes. it comes through because it's coming through the actual basket. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, the, the, the crema is essential for, for yeah. latte art. Look, well. crema plays a massive role in latte art, but more importantly, it, it, it's, it's the actual the gases of the espresso where a lot of the aroma lies. Okay. So if you don't have a crema and you pour, number one, it affects your latte art, and number yeah. two, it actually affects your flavor. Because remember, flavor, the flavor that you get is a combination of taste and aroma. Yeah. You know when you grow up, if you're eating vegetables, yes, of course. You block your nose. It's like COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are just over a minute there. All right. And watch this. I'll pop this over yeah. and... And through it goes. It just and it it goes quite through. quickly, eh? Look, this takes normally about a minute of extraction. Yeah, yeah. With specialty coffee or enjoying coffee on this level, oh, it's, beautiful. There's, there's, it's not a case of yeah. this is convenience. Yeah. This is time. It yeah, takes yeah, a little bit, a bit of, time. of time. It takes a bit of patience. You want good coffee, you give yeah. it a bit of time. That's right. Exactly. You'll notice with this one as well, is now you, there's all your crema on the surface. Yes, yes. But what's happening is we're filtering out all that residue that we, okay. we're getting with the coffee. But give yeah, it, give, yeah, just pick yeah, the yeah. coffee up, give it a sip. So as I was saying, the one thing with Brazil specifically, nutty, yes. earthy, chocolatey. Yes, I'm getting a bit of nut. I'm yeah. tasting the nuts. I'm, I'm surrounded by nuts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're not going to go to the other nuts. <laughs> no, not those nuts. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Okay, now that is very, very nice coffee. So what's going to say? Look at this. So the beauty about this is look you know at your that? grounds there. Yes. Beautifully extracted. Yeah. And the nice thing now is... And it stops messing because it's... take this and you just... Oh, look at that. Yeah. And it's gone and it's clean. And it's mess free. Yeah. And there you've got what basically... 500 moles of beautiful coffee to, to hand around for your guests. Yeah.
That's a, so that's a, that's a nice way. So of what I'm going to do, yeah, yeah. is you know we we we're gonna we're gonna actually give mm. you a little bit of that to taste, so you mm. can see the difference. So okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna COVID uh, friendly this one. Okay, that's fine. All that's right. fine. I'm Let's gonna pop that. that back over there. No, no, that's okay. fine. We'll leave it over there. Okay. And then I'm going to give you some of this. Uh, yes, this is the this this one, Rwandan. So they'll, they'll taste the difference between the Rwandan and the Brazilian. So Brazilian, more savory, more sweet notes of chocolate, um, yes. and very nutty. Okay. Whereas Rwandan, fruits, spices, um, definitely more acidic. Straight away oh, wow. with the bat. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's, well, it's easy to remember, I suppose, if it's Brazilian. How, how do you... Um, how do you remember the two together, Brazilian and nuts? I don't know how. I will do that. <laughs> That's an awkward moment. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stand here. All right. Well, uh, you, I suppose when you drink coffee, you don't stick your pinky up well. I certainly well, will. Okay. So I'm going to move Maybe. into a place where I have no culture, and I'm going to drink straight out of this. Oh, no, out of the jug. Good, good. Actually, well, I'll, I'll actually drink out of the cup and spoon. That is, uh, I actually do prefer the Rwandan for now. You notice it's just, um, the thing yeah. is for everybody, we all have a very different palate and yeah. we all enjoy specific aspects of certain coffees. Yeah. Now, a blend would be taking a combination of single origins yeah. and mixing them together using obviously some sort of formula, yeah. one part of this, one part of this, two parts of that, okay. to get, to get a, better, that thing. a better balance. But you notice this coffee is very light, it's not like yeah. espresso. Yeah. It's taking us, it's a slightly, it's a longer extraction time. There's a soaking process, very much like a, a filter coffee. Yeah. And, but, and, and uh, I mean, I know with this, obviously the espresso through the, through the espresso machine, yeah. it pushes through that. There's a, there's a specific um, uh, science to it as well. It's a, uh, what is it? Nine bars, nine bars of nine pressure, bars of pressure yeah. pushes for 20 odd seconds, 21 seconds, 22 mm. seconds. Um, through a, an amount of uh, grind between nine and eighteen grams, nine and a single or double, single or double yeah. nine grams yeah. of coffee at twenty-two seconds, mm. and that uh, mm. if you get thirty mils out of that, mm. that is a perfect, perfect, a perfect espresso. So, nice shot. thing to remember with espresso grind size, or let's say grind size versus extraction, is the yeah. finer the grind, the shorter the extraction time. Okay. The coarser the grind. The longer the extraction time. Wow. Okay. So with fruit, if you think of those old campfire percolators, where yes. it sits on like a mocha pot kind but of now thing. Now think of when you put it. If you put fine ground in there, what happens? You just end yeah. up with a cup of sludge. Yes. You yes. have to literally grind coffee three times coarser than wow. that. Wow. So, so that thick. it doesn't get it, it. It sits within that. And it goes sit. around and around and around, doesn't it? It basically filters through itself. Yes. Th there's those itself. old. Yeah. Uh, what, what are those? Uh, it's those camping. The camping yes. percolators. I remember we, we had one with it was there was oh. one with a with a white uh, a, a sort of a cream colored yes. with the with the blue. Flowers. I can't remember what yeah, they used to call those the pots. Old, um, like the, the old um, wood coffee pots. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's see, the blue flower. Come on, somebody remember. What were those, those pots? There was a whole range of pots with a, yeah. with a white and then the blue flower mm. on it. That was very popular. Mm. And I can't remember that. Corn, mm. Not corning way or? No, it was, something, it was like something like that. I see uh, Carl made a comment. He can smell the coffee from over here. Ah. Uh, uh, Carl, uh, Brian Carl, says he still needs his milk and four sugars. So Carl Squishy Grieber oh, right, is, yes. is the doctor that I was telling you about from Livingston, who okay. is the beanstalk in coffee. Oh, right. So okay. the Rwanda is compliments of Carl. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And, and, and Livingston, we've had yeah. the guys from Livingston on. Well done, Carl. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, I Carl. See, um, I see Pam, Pam is asking, please explain the process of decaf coffee. You need an exorcism, <laughs> woman. <laughs> I'm joking. We'll pay for her. Pam. 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 No. Stop. Stop. What? In the name of love. In the name of love. Okay. So decaf. Yes. The interesting thing is, unfortunately, there are different methods of decaffeine that decaffeinate in coffee. Okay. The most popular method around the world that is basically sold in specifically South Africa is where they use the CO2, the carbon dioxide process. Okay where they're passing the actual green coffee through um, what they call it subcritical um, okay. or um, CO2 process, where they're passing it through a combination of gases and liquid yes. to extract the caffeine out of the uh, coffee. Okay, so the it's, thing a, is it's with, quite a process. There, yeah, look, there's a lot of damage that is done to the bean, and yeah. you lose a lot of com complexity in the coffee, you lose a lot of flavor, yeah. it's impacting 
the different balances of the coffee. So it's impacting your acidity, it's impacting yeah. your sugars in the coffee, which brings out the natural sweetness. Yes. Um, the most uh, popular but yet most expensive method of, of decaffeinating coffee is what they call the Swiss water method. All right. The Swiss water method is where they actually wash coffees through a big bath of water okay. and introduce a current to the water which actually impacts and extracts the actual caffeine okay, out of the water. Okay. Sure. So it's, it's like a washing process if you want to call okay, that. Right. It actually extracts the caffeine out of the bean Okay. And then the problem with that is you have to now discard all that water. Oh, uh, right, I see. So it's not very, it's not very uh, nice for no. the environment. So Corningware, yeah, she says Corningware. Corningware. It was called yeah. Corningware. Yeah. That's, that's, that is it. Yeah. That is so, it. So, you know, for example, we last year we brought in a, a batch of Mexico L2 can decaf coffee. Um, okay. Locally, uh, there was a couple of guys selling it. Um, okay. Actually, Chris Farragher from Holiday yeah. Coffee had it on his bar. Okay. It's a phenomenal coffee, it was Swiss uh, water method, nice. and it has still those complexities and yeah. flavors because it's not getting damaged by the CO2 or even the chemical process, which is yeah. the other process where they actually use chemicals to extract. So a lot of, of, of customers don't realize that when you're decaffeinating coffee, you're actually impacting that complexity, that flavor, yes. those attributes on the coffee that you don't want to Okay, lose. yeah, it, yeah, is, a, it yeah. is a bit of a problem. Decaf is a little bit of a problem, otherwise you have mm. to go to the, the Swiss thing. Mm. <laughs> the the reality out there is there's people that have an actual, genuine um, resistance to caffeine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. No, no, I think, ideally I think, you, know, you, you want to be able to provide that for everybody. You have to have some. So, you know, although, you know, it's not the best, but it'll do. It'll, it'll do. It'll do, Pam. It'll nah. do. Now, um, there's, I did a little video, actually, of my, my roaster. Um, I mm. don't know, you can, you can give me a couple of tips on, on, on my roasting there. Um, Must I be honest? Yes, you have to be honest. Like, yes, really yes. honest? Yes, no, totally. Yeah. Okay. I might hit you doing this, bro. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's have a look at my roasting. Ah, no, 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 no. Alright, we started in my lounge there. That's where Gino's spot actually started. Uh, and this is the, is the roaster that I that I got from uh, from Sumatran actually from Deirdre, which is a great 300 grams. See, it fits in a little 300 grams. It's got a blowtorch in here. <laughs> There's your blowtorch, and uh, it's it, it's got a thermostat. So it tells, and there's also a little timer in there. So it tells you when the when when it starts to get the first crack, which is the first like pops like popcorn. First time it pops, it's a medium roast. So um, we're going to try and do a little bit of a roast so you can see how it happens. The dog goes ballistic, by the way, I don't know why. All right, so first thing to do, I've got a little special little system that I've got here. You see, special, my special little system. Green beans, green beans over here. This is uh, Guatemalan, from, all the way from Guatemala, these ones. I just uh, guess 300 grams, and uh, put it in the in the barrel. I have to get the right amount of beans, right size of beans, so that they don't fall through these little holes. Um, and then on it goes. Now we wait. Yeah, you see the chaff starting to come off now. That's the old skins. That's gonna. That's why you can't do this inside unless you've got some sort of suction machine. Now this is the first crack. You can hear the you can hear the popping. When you when that happens, you know it's a medium roast. So we're gonna just let it go a little longer. You can smell the coffee coming off, you can smell that coffee smell coming off here as well. Whew, quite a lot of gas and stuff that comes off. can be poisonous if you're in this confined space. Okay, so now that it's cooled down nicely, the beans are cooled down nicely. So we put it into the grinder, this is the hopper. Call that the hopper. And we put it in there. There we go. Lovely, we've got, we've got a whole lot of beans in there as well. So in it goes and then it can be ground. So we're going to set the grinder, the grinder gets set over here, you turn it left, uh, you know, left or right, clockwise, anti-clockwise, gives you the, the grind. And, uh, there we go, 
it looks lovely we even it out a bit and uh, tamp it with the tamping tool indeed so it compresses it nicely give it a little, give the machine a little flush this is a, a little vega and it nicely fixed up jay thank you for fixing up the machine so beautifully with some nice steam pressure for the milk and uh, off we go in it goes bit of milk spa milk it's got a um, the cardboard it, it falls apart after you've thrown it you know just in case you uh, um, it's biodegradable there we go you can see it coming out the crema coming we go close in close up here you see how it's coming out there it's going quite fast that's right mm -hmm. Probably a little bit more than 30 mils, but it's still getting the crema. They see that, that beautiful crema on top. That's what you want. The oils. That's the oils. All right. Uh, let's pull that out there. All right. And Spin it around, spin it around. It takes quick because the milk is already quite warm. It gets warm very quickly, it gets hot quickly. All right. Pour it into the pouring jug. You need to have a nice fair jug for your stuff. This one looks a little bit better. Here we go. Okay, we got it here. Can you make it? Can you see it? Just get a little base going. And there we go. <laughs> Not too bad, you know. Hey? Not too bad. I'm a proud father. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was there to birth. Okay. The best part of that video for me was your dog playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dog goes ball ballistic every time I roast coffee. I, I don't know. Oh, no. The chef comes off and it wants to jump to me. To be honest, you, you did it. Spot on. Spot on. It looked fantastic. It looked I like could, a good, it was I a good could, shot. I could smell. You could smell that. It vicariously through yeah, you. get it. Uh, the, the, the latte art obviously is, is another mm. story. And uh, you are this, the latte art specialist. And I know there, mm. there's some guys um, that, that, so, have, so. that I've seen. Um, I know Byron from Cape Town. He's in Cape Town now. Byron yeah. won the latte art competition. Yeah. And, um, uh, I mean, you know, the, the latte art thing is, a, is quite a quite a, a, a competition in the in the yeah. in the scars scars of compost that's great uh, and uh, uh, so so I want I think we must have a look at some of your latte art you you, you actually showed he came in and he showed me how to how to do a little elephant and a, and a teddy bear which I thought was fantastic I oh, loved it some fun before let's we start, have, Joe. let's have a look let's have a look there we go ready to rock and roll the teddy bear <laughs> uh -huh. start with the heart Kind of a tulip. Alright. I'll put a little bit of spooning, spooning out there. Lovely. Oh, and the bad. itching thing. Okay. <laughs> so there's the paws. It's a beaut. <laughs> oh, that's just lovely. Lovely. It's a teddy bear. Alright. What are you doing? hit it. We're in. That looks lovely. Uh -huh. Oh, look at you. <laughs> That's beautiful. Woo! So many net so many professionals. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, okay, I'll take okay, the stylist. Yeah. yeah. And all right. Just want to give it a nice thicker coat for the ear. 
Then I bring this around here, give us two beautiful little tusks. Tusks. And then oh, I take awesome. some brown for the R. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. And then my last two little bumps. And there we and, go. And if I want to give my elephants a little bit more character, I can take a bit from there. Oh, that's just beautiful. And why not just give him some hair? <laughs> that is beautiful, Sean. It's the African elephant. That is lovely. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love that. That was awesome. But but, but you, I mean, you can just see your your you've you've done this to perfection. That that yeah. that, that making those those um, what are they what do they call them uh, rosettas? Rosetta, uh, yeah. Rosettas yeah. are 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 difficult. And 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 it, I find it it's, it's a and when you walk into a coffee shop and and somebody does some good latte art, they are generally a good barista. Yeah. You know? you know, the thing is, it takes a lot of time and attention to detail and, and, and honing in on this craft yeah. to get to the point where your crema is so perfect to the point that it gives you that perfect base yes. you spoke about. Yeah. And the milk texturing is so important. The way yeah. you texture the milk, you need the perfect amount of vortex, the perfect amount of aeration. Yeah. You see that milk turning. It gets to a certain point where if you don't cut it and you stop heating the milk, you're going to break down the yes. milk way too much. As soon as that, the, 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 I always think that as soon as that milk boils, it's yeah. gone. You've destroyed it. You've so destroyed it. You kill all that natural sweetness. Now, the yeah. protein content within the milk gives you actually yeah. the foam structure. Oh, wow. Okay. So when you overheat the milk, you break down the protein too much. So when the guys go too far over in the terms of the yes. temperature and they pour their latte art and they wonder why their latte art's not good. Yeah. It's because they've broken down the protein too much. Mm -hmm. So it's so important. And I mean, you using this, I use the spa milk, the Woodlands yeah. Dairy milk. Yeah, Woodlands um, milk is... With, at uh, Red Band Academy, they yeah. sponsor us. Okay. Their milk, it's amazing. That, that, milk. That, that milk has been, uh, the, the baristas actually, actually yeah. come out saying that that milk is, is tops, you know, it's really nice. And once again, it's all about, not necessarily about the brand itself, but it's about the consistency of the product that's going to give yeah. you the ultimate drink that you're serving yes. to a client that they must get their money's worth. Yeah. And, you know, so latte art is just a way that you can express yourself. I've watched your latte art over the years <laughs> and your little characters. It's joy, girl. I love it. I love it. But that's the thing. Coffee connects people. Coffee brings yeah. joy. Coffee creates excitement. Yes. Coffee really is so much more than just a beverage. It's yeah. a way of life. It's, it's, it's so much more. And that's why every step of the process, if you look right from the farm, right yeah. to the client being served. Yeah. If every step was done with passion but, and yeah. intricacy. Exactly. And, you can actually taste it in that cup of coffee yeah. when somebody has put so much time and energy and effort and themselves yeah. into that cup. Yeah. And, and that's for sure. Right. They can, like mm. you say, they can destroy that coffee with, uh, in, in that lo at the last minute, you know. So, mm. so it's so important to actually mm. just check. I, I always, I've got a couple of questions that I go and say hi, hi to the barista. You know, uh, I think um, the, the, there's like a, um, the other thing about, about baristas and coffee is the, the, there's a, there's a huge, always been a huge drive in upliftment. Now, uh, if if it's if it's um, uh, baristas that have started out off the streets, you yeah. know, I mean, you've got a you've got a coffee uh, a barista academy, have you not? Yeah, yeah. Red Band Barista Academy. Uh, we started in 2014. Yeah. We're taking guys basically off the streets. We are teaching them a skill, finding them a job. Um, the most important thing is we go through a job readiness program. CSA Benz are work for a living. They go through that program. They can then come. They qualify then for an interview. Yeah. We interview the ladies, the guys. We we take we take them through a screening process because yeah. you know being a barista is about having a vibe. Yeah, it's about having the right attitude. Yeah. you cannot have a barista behind the counter that's standing there quietly. Yeah. Um, and is it a bad thing? No. Can they yeah. form part of a, a bigger team with that? Yes. With they've got a more maybe a, a quiet demeanor about yeah. them. Yeah. They can. Yeah. The thing is, is that you've got to think of the team holistically there. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, we take them through this program, we okay. teach them, we've placed baristas around the country. Yeah. We've, we've, we've put over, I would say, 250 to 300 baristas around the country and in Africa yeah. into jobs. And yeah, we've got That's a amazing. center in George, we've got a center in Cape Town. Our center in Cape Town, we actually did recently, it's through Gangstar, which is a prison rehabilitation wow. program. And that's been, 
just amazing. It's just yeah. been such a great journey to see how coffee changes lives. Coffee yeah. empowers people. I've seen it so many yeah. times. You know, I, 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 the, 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 one of the first things that I did when I, when I got into coffee, Angeline mm. was organizing the Scarza competition mm. at the Home Expo with Bev. I think mm. at, at, it was at the boardwalk. And they had the Home Expo on, and I was emceeing. And I see Gerald uh, watching from Scotland. I know he could talk, thought he could talk too much about coffee. I tell you what, <laughs> Gerald, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, much more munch. <laughs> Indeed. And you know, I, I've seen uh, basically the, the, these guys um, coming to the competitions, and, and I emceed that competition there. Yeah. And there was a, there was a guy there uh, who won the latte art that year, who was Mike Chiesa. Yes, and he had literally just arrived, uh, he's, he, and he's got a story. And of course, that is a um, me coffee or my coffee. Yeah. I'm not sure how he pronounces it. Yeah. But we went to visit him in Main Road, Warmi. He's got a little empire that he's building in this place. Let's have a look at Mike. All right, we're going to have a quick visit at one of the entrepreneur coffee entrepreneurs in town, Mike Chiesa. He's got my coffee in Main Road, Warmer. Let's have a look at what he's done. Um, Mike Chiesa. For Mike Coffee, um, I mean, what an amazing journey, Mike. I, I started working for Woolworths. Woolworths. Uh, I think I worked for them for nine years. Okay. And then I decided, okay, let me branch out and start my own thing. And okay. I guess. Sure, it's nine years. It's been an amazing journey. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, you, for me, epitomize entrepreneurship, Mike. I mean, you started from nothing. You know, did you start with a cart or did you start with a machine? How did you start? No, apparently, like what happened uh, when I was waiting for Woolworths, I bought Toyota Corolla car that yeah? I decided to sell and buy a machine. Okay, you sold the car? Yeah, <laughs> and the grinder. Yeah. That's a good and job. then that's how we started, and then we just put the machine on a, on a, on a trolley. A trolley, yeah. And yeah, we were just pulling the machine in and out of the natural yacht store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did, did you have a spot that you that you frequented? That was there? Did you go to festivals or? Uh, by that time we were not doing any events. I was just waiting for one spot where we are, but okay. Okay. at the back of the complex. Okay. Yeah. But from then we moved to uh, new events. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I did it. I I bought a little car, like lifting the machine. No, that was a light car. Was a light. <laughs> so lifting the machine. The Cosa Light bag out, put it in a, in a trolley, gazebo, <laughs> set up, you know, one man show, it was tough, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. but uh, with that event, we sort of like built our clientele much bigger. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. so we used the events to sort of like mobilize or advertise our brand. Yes, and was it always my coffee? It's been always my coffee. My coffee, so you, you decided on a brand and yes. you stuck to it. Yeah. And always my coffee. Brilliant. It's yeah. brilliant. And, and, and look how, how it's grown. I mean, you've got this, this store here in, yeah. uh, in Main Road Warmer. You've yeah. become part of the Warmer fabric here. Oh, yeah. it, it's amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The guys come past here. They always tell me they go past my coffee on the way home. Yeah. They get themselves a coffee. And now, now, that's one thing I've heard about you at Mike as yeah. well, is that you've been helping other people all the time. And, 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 and you, you, that's part of, your, part of your, the way you do things, is, is, is you help as well. You know, it's always, it's always, I think that's how I define humanity, you know? Yeah, yeah. You must find a reason to help someone next to you. So yeah. That's what life's supposed to be, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and now, have you expanded? Have you got other shops? Yes, we do. Uh, we have got our container setup corner 8 in Ukraine. 8 in Ukraine, okay. Uh, we have got a store as well, 17th Avenue, if you know, okay. called Tony Supplies. Yes. We've got a shop inside there. Ah, Tony's Appliances, uh, Cat's yeah, Camera World. Yes, yes. yes we've got a there, shop okay. there. We've got a shop in Queenstown. In Queenstown? In Queenstown as well. And Conte. Conte. Yeah, in Comani. Conte. <laughs> and as well in Newton Park. Corner okay. Frank and Park Avenue. Okay, wow. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. amazing. And yeah. starting from, from really just uh, selling your Toyota. To, to building a little empire yeah. Yes, well thanks to the people, you know, they've been so supportive, you know, and we're quite grateful about it. Yeah, oh good, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful to have met you and, and, and have, uh, have watched this journey because it's it's uh, it's inspirational for the young guys. I mean, have you got any any words of inspiration for, for the young guys starting out? A lot of, lot of baristas starting. As well. Yeah, but with coffee it's not about making money, yeah. you must be passion driven. Yeah. So with passion, any obstacle you can just walk through it because you are passion driven. If you're money driven, you're not going to make it in coffee. 
You're right. You're yeah. right in the end. Yeah. So about your coffees, you you do you have your own blend here? Uh, I'd say we were quite privileged um, through savings of whatever we were getting. We managed to buy our own roasting machine. Roasting machine? Which is right here. Oh, fantastic. So we do our own beans here. We create our own blend and um, that's the coffee that we're serving here. Do you any specific uh, Guatemala, Nicaragua? There's some yeah, 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 yeah. Our blend, we, we use... Um, Colombia, Colombia. Is that quite a, quite Guatemala, a strong... and a little bit of Rwanda and Tanzania. Yeah. A bit, bit of African coffee says, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Well, What is the in, in taste profile? Do you, do you know the difference between the taste? Because I don't, I don't know uh, how, how it works with the taste profiles. So, you know, do you, do you just do you just do it uh, have a tasting session, or how do you how do you work it out? No, we always try to bring and balance uh, taste and flavor profile into it. Okay. So if you had to taste our coffee, you find this lot of fruit, fruit nuts in it, but uh, as you finish drinking the coffee, at the back of your tongue, there yeah. must be like dark chocolate after ah, taste that you get after that. Chocolate stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that the, sounds good. That's the strength in our coffee. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, do you roast it dark or light or medium? We have got different roast profile. Okay. So each single origin, we roast different and then we blend together. Put it together. Yeah. And your baristas, you try them yourself? Yeah, we train a lot of baristas in PE around. We also take kids from our, off the streets. We train them free of charge and we look job for them as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that we've been doing for the past three years. And I can definitely say we produce about 50 baristas. So far. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Well done for what you've done. Amazing Thank job. Thanks so much for having me on your show. It's a pleasure. Just Mark. <laughs> okay, just, you know. <laughs> him to wink. <laughs> we asked him to wink. <laughs> he wasn't so good at winking. <laughs> no, Mark is he's an absolute inspiration in this industry. He is definitely one of my favorite coffee people in yeah. the industry. Mark has put his heart and soul out in totally. the coffee industry. And Entrepreneur. He's, Amazing. He's such an inspiration yeah, for is. me in terms of what guys have achieved. And yeah, yeah look, Mark... So proud of you, my brother. You have done so much. I uh, hope you're watching and you're listening to yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you will. I'm you sure are you will. an inspiration to me and many other people. I so, see uh, Gerald, Gerald ask you how much does a latte cost in SA? I think it's anything from about 20 bucks to 20 to 30 bucks, 35 bucks. So generally with a latte compared to a cappuccino, a lot of people don't realize is uh -huh. cappuccinos are based upon ratio of coffee versus milk. All oh, right. Lattes are generally a little bit more expensive than cappuccinos because it's instead of it being one to four to six parts of milk, it's about one to eight parts of milk. Okay. So you're probably paying anything around 28 to 30 bucks for a latte okay. because you've got about... 100 mils more milk in it. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So, so the milk cappuccino is more... would be a single shot in a 250 mil, where a latte would be a single shot in a 350 mil. Yeah, okay, okay. So you're paying that three, four rand more yes. for the milk. Yeah, so anything between, I would say, 20, 28 rand and, and 30 yeah, okay. bucks. Yeah. I see Nikki saying, amazing guy, I love my coffee. Indeed, is there? a lot of guys do it. I think it's a lot of the bikers going past there. It was so yeah. funny because he yeah. said to me, no, he's got, he had the colors, the colors of his shop were KTM colors, which is the motorbike colors. Yeah. And so he put a KTM sticker up and he said, all the KTM guys coming in. He said, he's always awesome. thinking of new plans. Oh, Mike, it's fantastic. Well done, Mike. <laughs> yeah. And uh, okay, so, so I mean, we, we pretty much, we, we're getting towards the end of this, uh, this, this tasting. And, I mean, and, and, and it's, it's like a... For you, it's always been a it's been a passion. I know. Mm. And and um, is there anything that 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 really drew you to this coffee thing? Is there anything that that uh, that that ex still excites you as well? I mean, you still you've yeah. been doing it for so long. Yeah. Look, this is my fifteenth year, um, and you know, I think I think trying to find the next thing that's going to motivate you, that's going to inspire you to want to be a better version of your current self. And I think for me, every step. Um, I always, I'm not a PE born and bred boy. Yeah, okay. I'm from Durban. Okay. And no, I'm just going to hear that because you say is and fish. And in. And un. Yeah. And whole crest. All right. <laughs> I'm going to roast you next. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the first step for me was wanting to build and give back into my community. Yeah, yeah. The second step for me was I, I love engaging with people and yeah. I had an opportunity to start writing for Perfect Daily Ground. Yeah. And for me, what it is, it's constantly um, encouraging me to do more 
and yeah. impart more and empower more. Yeah. But it also forces me to look at what's happening in the global industry yeah, as a yeah. whole, to look at what the coffee trends are doing around yeah. the world. So I'm constantly connected around the world. I'm, I'm, I'm talking with other writers in Canada, yeah. in Singapore, and it's so nice to see how the coffee culture globally has has developed. Incredible. I, I, yeah. I know Gary was 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 asking us in the break quickly about yeah. about wine because Gary, Gary's a wine mm. uh, mm. fundy, mm. and you've done some at uh, Hello to Me. I think you've yeah. done some wine yeah. and and coffee pairings. Does yeah. does the, is it the same sort of to taste profile? How how do they? S so how yeah, they without compare? a doubt, if you look at if you look at a wine flavor wheel versus a coffee flavor wheel, there are so many similar attributes with okay. wines. You know, when we talk about wines, we talk about cultivars of wines. When we yeah. talk about coffee, we talk about varietals. Okay. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. about the type of cherry. Yeah. And you get all those different flavor balances, complexities, all those flavors. So, for example, I enjoy mostly a white wine along the lines of a Sauvignon Blanc, a Chardonnay, a yeah. Chenin Blanc. Okay. Those flavor combinations of wines, those varietals of wines pair beautifully with coffee yeah, yeah. Okay. because of acidity. Yeah. dryness, bitterness. Okay. So bringing in the right combinations of coffee works really well. We did one tasting with Meridian yeah. at, at Hello It's Me. Olga Hefner. Yeah, I've done... And Michelle, I've, Michelle Brown. Yeah, <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure the, the lady I work with, yeah. but obviously Diane at Hello It's Me. Okay, I work yes, with yes, Diane yes. there. And then at JJ Zebra Lodge, uh, yes. just outside PE, I've done three tastings there using um, a combination of Dornier wines out of Cape Town and Edge Baston. Oh, and we had actually had the guy there uh, that was representing Edge Baston, and we did the, okay. the, the tasting together. So we actually paired coffee, wine, cheeses. Okay. Wow. Um, oh man, we used apple crumble. Oh, lovely. We used figs. I like we, a bit of apple crumble myself. <laughs> yeah, so it was really, really good. Most of the tastings we actually do revolve pretty much around ingredients and coffee. So we'll, yeah. we did a one at Hello to Me where we used four different desserts with four different single Jeez. origin coffees. Lovely. And how the, the actual desserts, flavors, highlighted the flavors in the coffee and yeah. how the coffee highlighted the flavors in the desserts. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's all about taste balance. It's I all see about... Yeah. See, Jeff Applewise just up the road with his, his B&B. &B. Yeah, <laughs> love your passion. Thank you very <laughs> much, Jeff. Yeah. You know, it's so so that that whole. I mean, and and what what is the story? Do you, do you drink wine first? Because everybody seems to drink coffee after their wine because, to try and fix themselves up. Is it to, <laughs> look or being like Elvis Presley well, with the, the downers and the uppers? Well, after <laughs> the first two wines and coffees, you know, I I I, I managed to stay focused on the first okay. two. <laughs> By the third and the fourth one, so I really don't get again anymore. <laughs> yeah. So. The interesting thing is it's combinations, it's finding that balance. So beforehand, the thing is we have to taste. So yeah. we try in the coffees at a specific temperature because yeah. as the coffee is cool, they change. As the wine warms up because it's sitting in the open, think wine gets hotter, coffee yes. gets cooler. Yes, yes, yes. Now all those flavors change and then bringing those ingredients in. So in some cases we would take a sip of coffee, have a taste of apple crumble, take another sip of coffee, it highlights something in the coffee. Yeah. Then you sip the wine yeah. and you've got a dryness in your mouth, but then you take a piece of fig and you sip the wine <laughs> and all of a sudden you've got a savoriness, you sip the coffee and all of a sudden the coffee tastes like chocolate. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, your taste and changes. And all those yes. flavors come together, and that's where your palate comes into play. Understanding yeah. where sweetness is, uh, you know, where you, where you pick up sweetness. So when I taste coffee and I sip on it and I say to you, it's fruity, yeah. it's, you, you've got to kind of think, break down, what is fruity? Where yeah. would you taste fruity on the tongue? It would be sour, it would be yeah. acidic, it would be sweet. If it's grapefruit, it would be bitter. So like yeah. Mark mentioned, dark chocolate. Dark yes. chocolate is a very, very common attribute of, of coffee, coffee yeah. and Brazil specifically. Yes. Yeah. Um, it has, but when you roast generally darker, yeah. you get that darker chocolate cocoa okay. type finish. That you even get that dryness that you get off cocoa. When you when you roast dark a, a dark roast, I mean, so saying the French roast, um, we yeah. love a wine and coffee pairing. I think we must do one next. Let's do one. We'll make a plan. We'll make yeah. a plan. Um, but the, the, that dark roast is, is obviously called the French roast, isn't yep. it? Um, but the, then the oils kind of come out to the surface of the bean. You can yep. almost see the shininess. Yeah of the bean is that is that good or bad i don't know it's it it's well i wouldn't say it's bad yeah you, if you're roasting for example to go that dark yeah you are aiming at a specific method okay of bean. okay if you're going to now put a very very dark bean through a method like this you're yeah. going to end up just with a very bitter coffee okay so going very dark you yeah. want to limit your extraction time yes. bring that down grind it finer and okay. get more essence more flavor okay. with 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 a, with a nicer finish 
if you if you allow that to soak too long, all yeah. those oils are going to draw out a lot of bitterness. You're going to end up with yeah. a lot of over extraction. All right. Oh. So you know, there, there's one other thing that we've kind of missed out on, and, and that is the Arabica bean, mm. which is the most popular bean mm. throughout the world of Arabica, and then you get the Robusta. And yep. A lot of people are like, "Oh, I like a lot of Robusta, but it's very bitter." What are you? What are your thoughts on the Robusta? Look, a lot of, um, of your Italian brands of coffee and a lot of people within South Africa use Robusta. Um, the b biggest difference is there's a massive price difference between yeah. the type of coffee. Robusta is much cheaper, much it's, more hardy. It's, it's, it's hardier, it's more robust, it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot more caffeine content yeah. in it as well. Okay, so it gives you more of a kick. It gives you more of a kick. And that's why a lot of your Italian brands use a slightly higher percentage of... Mm -hmm. Stronger, more stronger. Put the hair on my chest. Yes, of course. Okay. So, yeah, you've got no hair. <laughs> um, but it, it, is, it can be a very pleasant coffee. But once yeah. again, using a higher percentage Robusta and brewing it through a filter machine wouldn't be yeah. a good thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot yeah. of, a lot of suppliers out there or a lot of roasters that would use Robusta would use it for a specific reason to add a specific dimension, okay. flavor, okay. Um, and possibly even help with from a cost perspective. Yeah. So remember, we also, as, ro I mean, as roasters, as coffee suppliers, as a coffee community, we want to try also deliver coffee at a decent price. Yes, yes, of course. So if we can bring the blend price down, yeah. but then you wouldn't sell a 50% Arabic or a 50% Robusta no. to a person that uses a filter machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, you know, okay. it, your target market's very important. Okay. So, I think in PE, we don't really... Yeah, I do the robust too much. We don't so. have a, a major... A but if you're looking for a bit of strong, a bit of whoo, extra mm. power mm. into your coffee, mm. then a bit of mm. robusta is always a good thing. Or whiskey. Oh, so a bit of whiskey. Is, it, is whiskey a good thing to mix with coffee? What, what alcohol do you put in coffee? Well, you can make... Uh, uh, basically coffee uh, um, martinis, if you martinis. want to call it that, where you use a bit of Kahlua, a bit of vodka. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And okay. You, if you shake it up, you get a really nice uh, crema that you get on the surface. Yes. I mean, you can use a variety. Whiskey pairs beautifully with it because okay. it, I think it's got a lot to do with, with whiskey. You've got a lot of that fermentation taste yes. that sometimes really goes well with, yeah, with coffee. Yeah. The whiskey's um, got a lot of flavor. I, mean, I, 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 I love a bit Frangelico. of whiskey. Oh, Frangelico. Very nice, supporty. Beautiful with coffee. Absolutely beautiful the coffee, sir. Amaretto kind yeah. of thing as Amaretto, well. Yeah, amaretto, yeah. Very nice. So nuts. Nuts. Yeah. nuts. Going back to nuts again. So remember once again, it's that flavor that you bring in, for example, of that specific alcohol. Yeah. But not the alcohol itself. It's the flavor. Yeah, it's the flavor, of course. That's yes. bringing out a specific flavor in the coffee. Yeah. So that's why the flavored coffees do. Yeah. There is a place for them. Grappa. Yeah. Oh. Uh, very strong. Very strong at the very, grappa. Very strong, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, Sean, uh, it's it's been amazing. It's been a lovely, a lovely little coffee journey. Thank you for bringing all your stuff. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything we've we've kind of left out. Uh, thank you to the guys who gave a little bit of coffee here as well. Mm -hmm. um, Shot. Uh, what was it, Chris? Uh, uh, Ryan. Ryan. From, Ryan. Ryan. Bean and uh, uh, Carl from Kyle. Bean Stalking. Thank you for Kyle, to Kyle and of course. Uh, I know we, there's, there's so many coffee, uh, great coffee places here. I yeah. mean, there's, there's Rock and there's Vovatello where yeah. when everyone's yeah. spoken about. They've got yeah. brilliant coffee. Yeah. Um, the, these, these, these coffee uh, shops around town, are, actually, they've all upped their game. You yeah, know? they have, definitely. We, we, are, we really are spoiled in Port Elizabeth. Yeah. Not only from the fact of the level of coffee shops we have around town, but also th there's just the caliber of people. Yeah, the people are just amazing. The team, the team at Rock, the team at Volvatello, the yeah. the team at even a local Wimpy or a yeah. Magabean or, or anywhere. Yeah. Seattle's just, up the road here as well. Exactly. There's Urban so Express, many. of course, yeah. with Don and, yeah. and Angel. Uh, you know, they, they've really all all up their game. So we've got we've got good choices out there, guys. Mm. So don't be in a pleasure getting to know you as well, Vivian. <laughs> I like your comment a lot, eh? uh, He likes it a lot, eh? Did you hear that? Mm. He's just as corny as you are. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sean, for coming. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. You. And, uh, and, and sure. brilliant to have you in the studio. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, coffee is a passion of mine. And so, yeah. long may it last, young man. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>